Good afternoon. I would like to thank all the media for being present today. Your assistance in this investigation has been tremendous for our community, and we say thank y'all. I want to give a brief update of which way our investigation is going. Uh, thus far, law, law enforcement's footprint has been substantial as we are conducting searches and interviews throughout the greater Bruton area. As most of you know, we have searched ponds, land, homes, and vacant lots, and uh, vacant homes. Over the past, past few days, we have conducted hundreds of interviews, and I want to thank all the law enforcement that's been involved in those interviews and their expertise in us order to uh, trying to find Brook Bridges. The investigation this time has shifted toward exploitation of social media, which may be associated with Brooke. This is a tremendous endeavor that we have to go through. It is time consuming, but it's one that will be fully exploited. As you can see, Brooke's parents, Lisa and Jimmy Bridges is here, and her father would like to get up in front of the press and speak on his daughter and, uh, you know, just ask that someone out there is listening can uh, help us with this matter and bringing this child home to her family. Jimmy. My name is Jimmy Bridges. My wife is Lisa Bridges. If anyone out there has any clue where my daughter is at, please, I ask you, beg you, please bring her home. I miss her. I need her. She needs to be home with her family, people who loves her. And if she left on her own, baby, please come home. You're not in trouble. I need you. Your brother loves you. He wants you to come home. The whole family you need to be home with your parents. You know, don't worry about getting in trouble. The only thing in this world I want is you. I want you to come home. Call, call me anytime. Let me know where you're at. I'll come get you. I love you. If somebody has her, please let her go. Let her come home, be with her family. Whatever I can do to get her home. I we'll just want her to come home safe, unharmed. She's a sweet young girl. She give you a shirt off her back. And she needs to be home. and, um, you know, speaking with different family members, neighbors in that area. Um, you know, we follow up every lead. I mean, it just doesn't stay in Bruton area. It doesn't stay in Alabama. We, you know, we, we check it on everything that comes in, no matter how small or, bit, or large it is. Unless I misunderstood, it sounded like Mr. Bridges said, Brooke, you left on your own. He said, you did. Oh, if you left on your own? Okay. Yeah. Chief, could this be going on into, into Georgia? I mean, by checking Yes, it very well could be, yes. So are there going to be, you know, any sort of 
sort of bolos or Amber Alerts issue? Because checking some of the FBI's pages, there seems to be no other, you know, nationwide look looking for. I mean, it just mm -hmm. seems to be kind of You can speak on what, what all the FBI has out. Yeah, we, we do have the uh, electronic bulletins throughout the whole uh, Southeast. It's not nationwide, yes. Uh, yet. As a matter of fact, I saw it in uh, Fairhope as I was driving out there, it actually came up. So I know that it is out and it is active. Um, as far as the website at the FBI Twitter accounts, they do have that as well. But again, the investigation at this point is exploitation of evidence related to any Facebook or any of those type of uh, electronic media types, social media. Explain what goes into that. What, what you, you said it's a long process. What goes into it? What, what, are, you, what are you going to do now? Can you explain that to us? Yes, we have, um, you know, we still have guys working here, you know, doing the follow-up and leads, but then also we moved, um, you know, uh, several of our investigators along with FBI back to Mobile, and they just start working, you know, the computer side of it, digging and, uh, you know, checking everything through Facebook and, and, and other areas that they're, they're searching. So it's a very tedious process that they're having to go through, and that's what, you know, we, we want everybody to understand that, you know, these guys, just because you don't see them, in that general area anymore doesn't mean anything slowed down, doesn't mean anything stopped. We're just trying to shift our uh, investigation to another angle that is very tedious and slow. Is there a reason why you shifted this to this, or is this like a last resort? Is it just trying to switch things up? Why did you switch no, we're just, we're just switching things up. You know, we didn't have, obviously didn't have any luck here, you know, with the dogs and all, all the people assisting us. So, you know, we, we, we having to shift in another direction to try to, uh, to get, get more leads. Is the search on the ground here done then, essentially? Uh, I, I wouldn't say it's, I wouldn't say it's complete. Um, it has slowed down, which I think that's obvious in the presence. But um, no, I mean we've got uh, we've we've got the FBI and my guys are still out in the area working, um, you know, trying to follow up on. It, it's just and you know, you guys has been in this a long time. There's hundreds of leads that come in, and some of them some of them you like that may be a good one, but then some's bad, and we still have to follow up on everything. Anyway, uh, and this may be more of a question for you, Doug, uh, how many calls you've gotten from the billboards? I mean, we haven't gotten that yet. Not zero. We, have, we haven't gotten any information on that yet. Have more I don't know, they may be calling headquarters. They might be calling in, uh, into the mobile office, but at this time I don't have any of that information for you. What, what the big issue is, is it's shifting. It's, it's shifting into, obviously, exploitation. That means that we at the FBI have the resources and capabilities to look into a lot of different things that are no longer just the searches and you know the uh, uh, knocking on doors and interviewing individuals, but it's more of that technical side of it, which really requires subpoenas, requires the uh, uh, use of the courts to obtain that information from whomever that media might be. And that takes time. That's what it's referenced. And remain, the information comes back with substantial numbers of things. Do you remain optimistic? Absolutely. We always will. We always maintain that. And as we've mentioned it before, we, when we have a missing child, a minor, we're always going to get involved and provide as much assistance as possible until we figure out what happened. And we don't know at this point, we haven't decided if it's a runaway or a criminal act, or are we living one way or the other at this point? Uh, no, we're not. We're still straight, straight on the line with that. But, um, you know, as, as, as every, every day the sun comes up, you know, it just you know, it makes me concerned. You know, personally, it makes me concerned about our whereabouts. Is there ever going to be an Amber Alert issued throughout the country or throughout the, the, the uh, we, we have We have tried to do the Amber Alert and uh, was denied to say that the criteria wasn't met. So, yeah, there are specific criteria that have to be met. Um, relates to certain different things that they can look at and say, okay, this qualifies for an Amber Alert. We didn't have any of those at this time. How, how much ground have you covered leading up to today? And do you, how much more ground do you plan to cover as all towards exploitation at this point? No, we're, um, of course, when I say the Bruder, Bruton, greater, uh, greater Bruton area, I, I mean, we have covered everything we know to cover um, in, in the area where she was missing, um, even coming back to the north end of town. We've even you know, worked areas, uh, worked dumping sites, worked ponds, lakes, everything we know of. So. Um, but as, as leads come in or as stuff, you know, happens, if we will pick up and move to that location if we have to. But 
as far as the area right there in Alco, you know, we, we've pretty much exhausted all efforts right there in that area. Are you talking about? I can't speak on that. We can. Uh, can you talk about the community involvement? Uh, going around town, I've seen the same flyers you gave us last week posted at many locations. A lot of people were talking about there's a lot of concern within the community. Correct. Can, can you address the citizens here? A lot of them are actually scared. I talked to one young man, uh, about 12 years old. He mm -hmm. and his father, he's, he's kind of concerned about even going out because they don't know. This yeah. is one of those things, seven days have passed. And talk about that community involvement, spreading of the word. And, and of course, we're you know from a small community, so community involvement is huge for us. And uh, being in a small community, everybody knows about it. Everybody's been talking about it. But uh, the community's been great. Um, I don't I don't really feel that we need to put out that you know that everybody needs to be frightened and scared. But I do at the same time, you know, say, you know, know your surroundings, know what's going on. Um, if you see anything out of the abnorm, please pick up the phone and call us. It's, believe me, it is it, not a. Uh, you know, nothing. Nothing's too small for us to look into. But I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put that out that the community needs to be, you know, frightened that we have have something going. But I, you know, please keep it in mind that you know there, this is an issue that we have to address in this town. So what's next? What are the next steps? Uh, just keep pressing forward on on what we've what we've told you about, and um, just take one day at a time. Thank y'all.